Hey everypony New Leaf here, and today the much anticipated video about my adventures in Ponycon Holland where you eat Stroop Waffles and Puffer Chess and gain lots of weight while admiring tulips and windmills everypony. And yes, this was a convention filled with mystery because there was a murder case to be solved. And in order to do that, you're going to have to grab some popcorn, your favorite soda, sit back and get ready as I recite my adventures in the Netherlands. And this journey begins at the very familiar train station from Galacon. Um, but this time I wanted to show you something curious because there's actually a huge castle in the background and um, there is actually an alicorn that lives there and uh, you, you need to be nice to them when you come here. Anyway, um, we traveled along into the Riverlands, took the train, and it was kind of beautiful, though kind of hazy if I may say so myself, but eventually we'd get to this very familiar train station. We've been there when we've traveled to our British friends, but this time we're gonna go somewhere different. But if there's one thing that this trip um, had happening from the start to finish, it's this. Look at this, the rain droplets on the windows. It was like this for four days straight. The Pegasi were going over time, but eventually this train took us to Utrecht Central, um, which is their train station. And what makes these curious is you actually have to get a crazy chip card and it works for everything, which is practical if, if you're in the country, but if you're not from there, you have to walk around, look for ways to charge it, then find the and the buses. You see the buses, they also leave from this train station. Speaking of which, yep, I rode on one of those buses to get close to the convention on. I think this is the first time I've actually been on a bus in, in the history of this channel, ponies. Um, but um, this bus would take me to Zeist, who is the, uh, the town name. And uh, yeah, look at this, more rain. <laughs> like the human is just sh uh, shielding himself. But who made this curious, I actually went, um, you know, in search of the hotel, I, I think I went the wrong way for about five minutes, only to realize I'd been going in the opposite way. Thanks, freaking phone. But these things do happen when you're new place. It's always exciting and curious and um, if you keep going into the city You know the way that I'm facing this pi uh, picture is actually the right way You get to see curious things like this pizza shop. I think then over here We have a garage, but didn't really have any cars and this had a bunch of sweets like these are macarons and um, um, You know as someone who likes sweets most of the stuff was eaten but eventually my window shopping led me to the figgy hotel which is also where we would stay and conveniently enough this is also where the convention would take place but ponies before that happens we gotta go and inspect the room because at this point you know at this point where we're, we're kind of we we we, we it's sort, it's sort of we have become review ponies but yeah ponies let me show you this room But yes, ponies, there was a creepy, creepy door in that room. It was a big one, as you can see, but um, this door didn't open. There was no key that you could turn, but there was definitely a room on the other side. So if someone wanted to, like, jump out at me and take my stuff and they weren't there, they totally could have done that. But to not get distracted, the room was actually kind of spacious. There was a lot of light. There was a lot of, um, you know, seating areas, this huge desk, of course, and um, it was pretty nice. I could imagine myself doing some work there. But every pony, I'd noticed something even more peculiar, and that is that there was a tea set. You could brew your own tea and coffee there, and we're going to make use of that later. But for now, I had to go out on that evening because before the convention begins, there's a get-together. The Friday evening dinner and this, um, you know, we, for this I had to go into this, which is a, um, I think this is more of a regional train in the Netherlands and it led us to Tante Truce and um, that's where they make a bunch of pancakes. But before we go into, into there, we have to say hello to all the ponies, including this who I think is, is called Waffles and uh, let's see what Waffles is all about. Okay, <laughs> 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 
And that every pony's a Stroop waffle, which he is having, by the way. We're gonna eat one of those in another another little video. But um, if you go inside, you get to look at the menus and take a look at what we have here. We have a Dutch menu, and uh, surprisingly, my this was my fourth or no wait, my, actually my fifth trip into the Netherlands, and I knew some of the stuff that was actually there. I wasn't totally lost as as I usually am, which is super duper welcome, ponies. And um, I ordered this. So as a drink, we would actually be able to get um, chocolate milk in glass bottles, which was pretty freaking fancy. But the main dish was this, this huge pancake, which is the size of a pizza with bananas, chocolate syrup, ice cream, and cinnamon. Oh boy, ponies, that was a very delicious and very sweet thing. Diet plan's gone again. But I tell you, it is a sweet dish, and you know what? Nothing stops you from having a dessert for your dessert, and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I had so much sugar that day and night. But, um, yeah, I got ice cream in this fancy cup that you get out, could eat out of, which was kind of a nice thing. It tasted really good, and I, um, yeah, d definitely didn't want anything sweet for a while, but it was worth it. It was delicious, and, um, that means you gotta go back for more at some point, but not, not now. Anyway, I went back to the hotel after this uh, very delicious meal, and um, yes, every pony was time to try out the tea making machine. We made some Earl Grey, and um, let's see what that was like. And like that, we made our cup of Earl Grey. <laughs> time to give this a taste. I hope I did that correctly. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, it's actually quite nice, ponies. Yeah. <laughs> Learned something from Britannia after all. But yes, ponies, this was a very delicious thing to experience, but um, since it was super duper late at that point, I decided to go to bed. And the best thing about going to bed is that breakfast is just around the corner. Take a look at this breakfast. So here we begin in a huge mall where you just had so many options let's just go over this so here we have a bunch of um bread we have croissants we have some cornbread at the very back then we have some what is it? i think that's some rolls at the bottom we have cake off to the right side and uh, moving along this we find some cold cuts cheese meat and um let's see over here we have some salmon and um, yeah, this was something pretty cool. There's a few vegetables and that stuff to the right side that's in a little bit of a sausage. We, we had some of that on day two, but we're gonna go in and see what that is all about. And yes, this picture is awfully blurry, <laughs> but it's what happens when you make a picture in a hurry. Eggs and pancakes, it's all you need to know. Moving along, over here we had a whole bunch of bacon and sausages. Oh heavens, yes please. But over here, they had juice, and I think this is some um, granola crackers with a bunch of um, jam on them, I don't know. But ponies, my first plate of many as always, um, with something like this. There's a little bit of everything as a first plate. There's some nice things, seriously, ponies, this is already making me hungry. Um, but point being is this was the first of many while enjoying this beautiful sight of a view in the morning. Look at this! And you see that out there? Yes, that is rain happening. Um, but yes, waking up to this, eating breakfast, that's just dreamy in the best of ways, everybody. And uh, what is the best we do to accompany this? A great beverage. This is a hot chocolate. And uh, the lady actually made this for me, which is super duper nice. Shoutouts to her. And, um, second plate, we got some of the pancakes with that syrup. Look at how glossy that is. It was so delicious. And after a third plate of more sweets, <laughs> I finally decided I had my filling. And, um, you know, would actually go back to the hotel room, get ready for the convention. But, um, Twilight was there. She was having a lot of food. And so was Izzy, who I met on the way to, to the hotel room back. She was absolutely excited and um, sparkly ponies. Um, but once it was at the hotel room, I got my bags and everything because you need to store your merch somewhere. And I 
um, found the banner on the way to the convention, which was inside the same building. It was a pretty exciting thing to just like take the elevator down to the convention. <laughs> Something I never did in my life, but boy was it hyper. And um, yes, this is an interesting um, one. Let's take a look at this. You see how it says a series of mysterious events that's going to be sort of the theme of this um, convention. But eventually we were let inside and take a look at this. We have a um, convention center in here with a glass dome at the top. We have Princess Celestia's flag in the first floor. So yes, this convention happened over two floors of this place. And uh, we got to go inside and collect a con book and that's what it looked like. It had puzzles that you had to solve to beat a certain um, mystery. But we're gonna go about what this mystery is in a moment. Um, but do note that we're gonna be solving some of these at the end. And um, for now, the first thing we could do while they were setting up the opening ceremonies, look around at some of the merch. Look at what we have here. This is a bunch of pillows and um, Daki Makuras, um, of course, watched over by Izzy. Unfortunately, the Izzy's were not for sale. <laughs> oh, dang, man, no Izzy's hat today. Moving along, we have a table with um, BapsCon merch. Pony was definitely considering going there um, because at some point I do want to get a... American con under my belt gonna be huge travel, but Pony's always ready for traveling. Moving forward, we see some stickers. That's a whole lot of stickers, Ponies. And this is Torben's stand who had his big printer coming along with a caution hot sun and he was able to print just about anything. Of course, got something there and as always there's a picture at the end showing everything that we bought. Um, this is still part of Torben's stand who had a huge, huge stand. And this was some glowy stuff, which really, really looked fancy. There's some mouse pads at the bottom left, some um, glasses cleaning thing. He has just about everything you'd ever really need. If there's an apocalypse, the guy has you. Um, yes, this is still his stand, I think. Yeah, I think it is still his stand. I think those are phone covers at the bottom. Um, purse, purses. Wow, well, okay, I just have everything. <laughs> okay, do leave stop. We're not buying anything now. We actually had to get going because the opening ceremony was ready. But before I give you ponies a better view on this, I actually want to want you ponies to look at this room. This is a cinema. This is where uh, where you'd normally watch movies, but instead we had a convention. What that allowed ponies to do is get a really, really good view. Great um, um, acoustics. It provided a very special atmosphere. But um, let me tell you something a little more about atmosphere that this convention did extremely well. <laughs> yes, every pony. There was a scary mystery of some pony had gotten very, very hurt, and they were the director of a park. And um, we became detectives for the duration of the convention because we had to find out who did it, ponies. Um, I don't know if he actually got paid or anything, but um, it's an interesting thing of how they decided to present this thing. Remember, this is a movie theater and they made the most of the stage by providing us a musical sort of thing or um, theater show where, um, you know, ponies were sort of role playing as, um, you know, as the, um, I think this on the right, the pony with the red uh, mane is the host Waffles, and on the left we have um, police inspectors. It was pretty nice, and you see there's different sets. On the left we have an inter interrogation room, on the right we have some stands. It was pretty nice, look at this. Wow. <laughs> um, God, these things always so tangled up. I don't get it. Mm. Um, yes, you see how they would move from set to set show as different things and it provided a very unique atmosphere and it really grabbed you ponies. It really made you feel like you were part of this and got to see so much um, of uh, what is really happening with the whole mystery theme. And that really impressed me how instead of just quote a normal opening ceremony from, from some conventions, they go it gave us a full-fledged freaking theater show and uh, that was impressive and if you've ever done something like this you know how hard it is to study the lines and build sets and all that. But um, they also involved a lot of humor, look at this, this pony. Um, when I had a hit behind a lamp shade of sorts, they were definitely not found in there in about two seconds. 
Um, but moving along, they would eventually go to um, another section of the opening ceremony where they would show us the guests, including um, GM Barrow, who is a lead story editor for Generation Four, uh, Generation Five, and writer for uh, Generation Four, and also the voice of Zoom Zephyr Wing. Then another pony was Nicole Oliver, the voice of Princess Celestia. Um, who um, also voices Cheerily and Treehugger, which are two things I did not know. And there's one more, uh, which is the voice of Pip Petals provided by A.G. Bridal. But after the opening ceremony, uh, we had to go back out because there were so many choices, but on the way there we got sidetracked by more merch. Look at this, you could get a whole set of plushies for just 120. Um, then over here we have, I think these are some crystal mods that look really cool and fancy, dare I say that. Look at that, there's stickers and you see there's Pikmin in the center too. I think that's a game that I've played on the channel a while ago. Um, then moving along we find a few smaller plushy things hanging on the right side and on the left side at the bottom. You see some bigger plushies, those are pretty adorable ones. And then over here at something interesting, you could actually buy clothes here, and this is a bunch of hoodies coming in all sorts of shapes and colors and sizes. Um, then moving over to this pony who did a bunch of arts, stickers, plushies, it was a pretty nice thing. Here we have a great overview of this uh, merch, I think this was just like half of it. It was super spacious, there's a lot of things to see here, and um... That really, really made it nice for you as a pony who came there to just see the spectrum of brony merch, if that made any sense. Here's another pony. They were having a good time. Excellent costumes. So much great cosplay to go around that convention to. Um, but moving along to another stand, and this one caught my eye because it is another convention in the land of tea and crumpets in um, UK, where also UK pony Con took place. And, um, we may, oh this is a horrible look, we may go to another convention, get it, because it happens in May. Okay, New Leaf, move along before you get arrested. Here we have keychains and some stickers and drawings and I think that's postcards at the center. I didn't get to go very close to that. Over here we have some bookmarks and, um, you know, as somebody likes his books, this is a good thing to have. Um, then we have some more um, cards, drawings, There's you see that at the bottom, there's more postcards. They did commissions too. There's a lot of people actually did commissions at the convention, which is really nice. Then over here we have this table which is just filled with plushies. There were so many plushies to be seen. Here's another table uh, with the main six. Um, I don't think there were many main, uh, main five plushies from um, the new generation. And this was some interesting merch to me. This was puzzles made with uh, wooden parts. They're kind of nice. We have some um, lights there that you could like set up. I have one too, but it is sort of starting to flicker a little bit. Gonna have to fix that one. Um, over here we have blankets, buttons, coasters, um, key mugs off to the left side, keychains even more than over here. We had some. Yeah, this this basically became an excuse for me to use um, seven euros to gamble and didn't go that well. I'm not the luckiest of ponies when it comes to these things. Um, but on the way to the next panel, I met an interesting and familiar face. This. Yes, every pony. Remember Izzy Spin from UK PonyCon? That pony was here with all of his merch. And um, he was, was having a good time. And Princess Celeste was there too. Definitely, definitely had a good time there. And over here we have the Lunar Republic um, with their flag. Didn't see that on the way up. And um, this pony here, this is 404 compliant and he had what I consider the best um, cosplay scene at the convention. This is a senior butterscotch if you didn't recognize it. It looked freaking amazing. Um, then over here, another familiar face. This is a changeling from Galacon. You remember him, I bet you. And it was like, New Leaf, I know you. And he saw my hat and took the hat and was like, Sir, you, you're gonna have to return that. Otherwise, the guards are gonna come and take you away. And um, I, 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 think, I don't know if they did, take, took him away, but eventually did give my hat back, but I think it looked kind of cool with that. Seriously, look at that. 
every pony just looks 10 million times better when they put a hat on them. Look at that. That's just infinite fanciness right there. But we had to go quickly because it was the first panel. And this one was about cosplay care. Because um, I always was wondering what it's like to have one of those fursuit things. And I was always told it's like super warm and sweaty in there. And if you have claustrophobia, well, you might want to think about this. This panel was about taking care of those things. And um, they first of all told us the different ki kinds of costume. There's cosplay and fursuit. And um, they talked a bit about the storage too. How you might want to hang some of this, those things and sometimes fold them depending on what you have and they also talked about the different kind of dirtiness and of course how you can fix them it's just really educational panel and informative and that's what i think makes a good panel is if you learn something if you take something away from the panel that's that's a that's a good one i really like this one um and I think Izzy here really liked it too. Seriously, I found this Izzy bag and I had to get it. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. I know it's Izzy. But over here we have two plushies. And on the right is Waffles, the mascot of PonyCon Holland. And um, he was chatting it up with another Pegasus friend. And uh, speaking of friends, here is a little bit of an invitation from Millie, the mascot of Epona Fest in... Um, that's in um I, I know that's in italy but i don't know which uh, which part i think that's like northern italy i think that's milan definitely i want to go there and um it's it's sort of soon everybody it's not soon it's in june there was another one that's in april june is actually actually ways away might go there ponies we'll never know but what i do know is there's conventions and that there's karaoke there and we went there and we sung our hearts out Tony went crazy and ballistic, but there's some pretty good singers there. They're, I think those were the, the toughest competition when it came to singers. But the other reason to actually go to this room was waiting. We were waiting for Princess Celestia and Pip Petals and Jim Barrow and they would come out and um, provide signatures. And I think Princess Celestia even did some, um, you know, special shout outs and voices and um, she, she was really happy to come to the human world because we had cake. You saw that at the breakfast there was no leftovers after Princess Celestia showed up there. Um, then after um, the signatures and cards, I went back to the merch hall, wanted to see what else there is, and uh, there was um, Autumn Blaze who also was around shopping, and um, yes, look at this. I picked up the unicycle thing because I thought it was kind of adorable. But we kind of have to move along to the next panel quickly because it is one of my favorites, the Dutch Fun Panel, a clash of cultures, if I describe it in a single expression, where we bring our contestants from just earlier after signing our things and saying some words, they, the ponies now get to experience the Dutch world of many treats. But the way this panel works is, um, I think it was divided into three sections. The first thing was they had to like eat a few things. You see here we have some licorice, we have stewed pears, stroop waffles, and they basically had to eat them. <laughs> it was, yeah, you see Princess Celeste was not a fan of the fish, but she definitely liked the stewed pears. And um, it was interesting to see how they would handle the food. Yeah, Princess Celestia, yeah, she, she, she wasn't just like gone for a minute because she didn't like the food or anything. No way. Um, then here's a second selection of foods. Um, this is some cheese. Yeah, there's some cheese, but I mean the, the top thing, filled food, speculos. Then we have tompus, which doesn't even have a translation. Then you have pepernotten. Um, yeah, this was interesting, and I think that made it kind of educational in a way. Like, if you've never tried those things, this definitely got you curious. But the second part of this panel, um, they were um, made to pronounce Dutch things and sayings and figure out what they mean, and they also got to play a few games, which was really nice, and it was nice to see them, of course, interact with the Dutch culture, because it is not something that many people from across the Atlantic get to interact with every day and it is a nice thing but you know what is also nice dancing there was a dance mat and I tried dancing on it and unfortunately it was broken but I may get one of those in due time for at home activities ponies 
But since it's been a while since I've had this huge breakfast, I needed dinner badly. Ponies, I haven't eaten in ages. This was lasagna, which was delicious. And uh, they covered it in bacon, which I'm sure would make Millie rage in fury. But it was delicious. I will say that it was very delicious. Look at that plate cleaned, or just before I cleaned up every crumb on there. So good. But ponies, um, since it is Nightmare Night and there was a scary house, I decided to go into the scary house, but because of a certain way this was made, um, let me ponies instead use the power of editing and magic to show you what it was like going into this haunted house. So ponies, imagine there is a dark corridor. No, it's actually this dark because you are blindfolded. And then you begin walking and holding your hoof against the walls while you're walking. And you hear ancient whispers and growls in the shadows and well, something just swiped against your coat. And there's the spray of water that's sprayed in your face and you got water all over you too. While you hear footsteps off in the distance, giggling as creatures try chasing you down. What is that you bump into? wooden stairs you almost can't see as you trip forward and crumble down but you manage to get back up as someone almost manages to punch you but you manage to get out of the way by sheer miracle and you have to crawl underneath some tight spaces and then there is a giant fish that tries to eat you and there's some bony raiding your darkest minds and exposing your secrets and then um you come out of the other end of the scary house like this look at this this pony has a blindfold it's dark he's crawling he's scared he's wet some pony definitely tacked him in there it was pretty creepy and uh, maybe not everything I said happened in there, you'd be legit to that. Um, but ponies, um, after the scary house, it needed some cheers, and what better way to cheer me up than even more karaoke, you ponies. Karaoke's the best thing, but you know what is better than karaoke? Nothing, unless you accompany it with cookies. Look at this, they had cookies at the convention. So of course we have to try this. Taste test, here we go. Surprise taste test. Mm -hmm. Mmm! So many flavors, so chocolatey. Look at this thing. Yeah, this was a good one, ponies. This was super crunchy. They, they nailed that. Um, but as I was staring in the distance, I noticed a few banners. Heart Swarming Con 2020. So many freaking memories. I was there, and there's a video on this channel about it. If you want to watch more of this, you know where to go. But this convention hall had this intricate property that there was many hallways and things you could just run into like this every pony this was something that was just stood on a table at the far end of a corner Stay out of my ship. yes there is a lot of curiosities to go around we're gonna see more of that later but since it was late it was time to party and party we did look at that ponies dancing away and i had to go up there on stage and dance along and dance the night away Yes, everybody, of course I can't play more of that because copyright, but seriously, it was freaking banging music. And look at that, Izzy's on the action too. What a great, great time. But after the party winded down, um, I want to take a look at some of these posters. And here we have, in a nutshell, three conventions. I might go to one of these in the coming year. Griffith Isles. Um, there is one in Austria, of course, Eponifest and Tequestria. Tequestria I've also been to, but I think that was before I even made videos. Tequestria also a great one to go to. Um, but because it was also sort of the end of the night, I got to sit down and take a look at the mystery. In the con book, here we have a few instructions on this. There's a few tasks that you have to do and beat to get marbles, and marbles give clues, and clues help us figure out the mystery of who killed the director. Oh, are we never gonna see Waffles again? He's gonna be locked away. We don't know, but we can try and prove their innocence by solving this mystery. And after a few moments of thinking carefully, look at this, I got all 12 clues. All I needed to do was present this the next day, but ponies, after a long day, you need sleep and 
a bath. Every pony took a bath, and um, of course, there w it was very bubbly. Put a, put a bunch of soap in there and just went crazy. This is this is me we're talking about. I have a lot of energy. But ponies, you remember the tea machine from earlier? Guess what? It's 2 a.m. and the party ended. But you know what doesn't end? Tea. I just made a breakfast tea in the middle of the night. I'm a rebel. Let's see what this is like, ponies. Ooh, I actually prefer this one over the one from yesterday. <laughs> Who knew that an English breakfast tea was gonna be good at night? That is, that is, that is leaf logic if I've ever seen any. <laughs> yes, ponies, I had two in the middle, I had two in the middle of the night. You can't stop me. But yeah, but yeah, after I went to bed, um, you know, I got actual breakfast. No, no, there was no evening tea this time, but there was cake, a lot of cake this time. They were ready for Princess Celestia. And there's more pastries there at the bottom this time. You get to see them properly. But what's the best thing about this morning is the view. Look at this. It is just so gorgeous. You have the lights from the inside reflecting off of the window. You have the lights outside giving a very luminous view as the sun slowly starts to rise. It is so magical just sitting here and eating your freaking breakfast. And this time, um, there were a few experiments had, um, including this the smoothie that they had, which was really interesting. And um, of course, as always, we are gonna be trying that in a little bit, but moving along with the normal breakfast pattern, I had some pancakes, some cake, more pancakes, and what was best about this, as I started eating, this picture was taken, I think, about 30 minutes after the other picture from the very same table. And it was super bright. That's why I think this is the best time of the year, because it uh, approaches equal parts of night and day, which is nice. Princess Celestia should be hugging all the daylight. Whoa, what the... Oh, I think it just got, got a message. Sorry, Princess Celestia. Um, but... I had this weird paste from day one that I showed you, and it was actually fish paste with, I think, some onions and a lot of spicy flavor, which is actually really good. But you see, yes, this is the third plate, and um, I wasn't just done yet because I wanted more. Here we have some yogurt <laughs> with cereal and um, some grains. Yeah, I'm hungry all the time, but ponies, you know what we're gonna say for last, right? The smoothie. Here goes the taste test. Here we go. Hmm. What? That's liquid, every pony. Yeah, this uh, one was not very cold at all. And really delicious, so definitely props to them. It's nice to see other ponies and humans making smoothies. But I think the scariest thing happened when I went back to the room. Do you remember the creepy door? Well, guess what? It got even creepier because it was this random numbers on the wall. I don't know if someone wrote that there previously, I don't know, or this is just some curse. Something's gonna have been happening there, I definitely wasn't sure about what was behind that freaking door. But after getting my things ready for the second day, I went over to the info desk and over here we have a marble meter, and this counts how many ponies have gotten clues for the uh, mystery. And we were doing pretty well, and as we got more clues, more um, information became available. Look at this. We have two ponies eagerly debating on who made the director disappear. Um, yes, but it was gonna be taking a little bit more tinkering to find out who did it. And every pony, what I did is I handed in my card because I got full credit. Look at this, all three boxes marked off. Newly got the perfect score. And, um, yes, we, we did get something for this. Will be happening at the end of the video. And we had to go into our first panel, though, kind of quickly, because this was right at the morning still. And this one talked a bit about pony plushies. And, um, the human there told us about collecting them and how many kinds there are, which is really nice and informative. And uh, over here we have, of course, Galacon. Another pony con where we made a video about when we were there and he showed us just how much variety there is how much fun they can be um, But warned us about how addictive it is because once you buy one you'll buy two and you'll buy three and so on And before you know it you'll just have a whole room filled with plushies like like he does 
Um, then we have some information about those who make plushies. This is Ollie Factory, who makes some of the plushies that you can buy relatively affordably, if you know where to look. Um, then here we have a uh, website known as Symbiote Studios, where you can buy more official stuff. It was a very good panel where we got a good overview about what to do if you wanted more plushies, and I think that is what the pony intended to do. But we got to go back outside and uh, take a look at this venue. Seriously, look at how majestic that is. That is so freaking cool. Sun coming out, glass roof. That's what an alicorn likes to see. But you know what an alicorn also likes to see? And that would be karaoke, of course. We went back for more. This was one of my favorite songs. And here's a little clip of me singing along. We will live in joyous laughter. Pretty amazing ponies. You can never stop singing. There is no such thing as singing too much. But after the karaoke, I found this curious table with plushies. Look at this. And of course, you see that one at the right with the human was like, Have I seen this one before? And, um, well, let's put it this way this human reminded me, Yes, this is the pony who's on the plushie. <laughs> I tell you, that's some crazy cool spirit animal energy if I've ever seen some. Even Twilight Sparkle was going triangles trying to figure that one out. Um, but eventually, we did figure something else out, and that is more clues became available about the mystery. And it is now, at that point, where we discovered it is a sketch of the mechanism that was used to cause the accident that happened to the director, where he got crushed underneath a bag of flour, was found in Van Brush's sketchbook. Very curious, why would that be in the director's book? Over here we have some files where we can inspect the different ponies and suspects. And uh, look at this. Um, this is Waffles. That pony's been having a lot of puffer chests and waffles. Look at that pony. Pony might want a diet or two. Anyway, ponies, before we go on the wild tangent here, um, we did get to go into the next panel. And um, this was Tales of Equestria. We played this on the channel before. Crazy good um, pen and paper. And I think I'm going to be doing another one of these with that book in mind because it has expansions. These are expansions. And what makes this one great, it is simple. It is beginner friendly. And um, to quote the pony who held the panel, if um, you're making your players do a homework at home to be able to just make their characters, then you're going too far. Um, yeah, look at these books. This is so pretty! Um, I think the right one played after the movie, and I think the left one is, um, just another kind of expansion, which is really nice. There's some great art inside the books, too. It comes with, um, creature sheets, or character creation sheets, which is really nice, and, um, what, what made this panel interesting is we, as the audience, actually became players in, um, you know, as a group, sort of, as a hive mind, if that makes any sense. We got to play along with this huge dice. I think it was kind of cursed. He got an abnormal amount of ones as it felt. But um, eventually we got to solve a mystery where some pony was stealing cutie marks. Nasty little thing. But um, yeah, we're going to see what I do with a book like that in due time. But I went back outside because there was an interesting thing to see, which was a board of stickers. Interesting number of ponies. Um, and here we have the Twiglet Twig left Stalin Gulak, which was an interesting set to see, to say the least. Over here we got more plushies. Seriously, look at those. Those are some gorgeous eye catchers I've ever seen any. Um, Applejack was also very happy to be there. And um, here we have some more ponies that were just posing, and I took a pictures. It was really, really nice to see all the joy and fun and laughter in their faces. 
But eventually, the mystery was solved almost because there was Rat Chuck found at Fanbrush's stall, which was used to mark the spot where the director was struck. Were they behind it all along? But before we moved along into solving the mystery for good, we found a, a, a rare Teton cabinet, which is a cabinet of rarities, and yes, this is a cabinet filled with a lot of rarities indeed. Um, but we actually have to go to the charity auction because that always comes before the closing ceremony, and as always, we're going to take a look at some of the cool items, but of course, we also have to talk a bit about the charity that is for, and that is Dream for Kids, where they make dreams for children come true, and um, this is Kyoshe, this is a kid who had a very traumatic experience when she was young, and um, this uh, charity aims at making them a dream day or a dream thingy come true, and just helping them have a great memory to push them further in life. So before we go over these items, as always, I cannot go over every single item, otherwise we'd be having a three-hour video, but I'm going over some of the highlights here. So we have a BronyCon 2019 poster, which was from the last BronyCon ever, Pretty rare in its own. Then over here we have a print of Miss Libusa, who is the mascot of Tequestria. Um, following along we have the creepy dolls from earlier, which got auctioned off. Um, here we have a story commission, which was a very unique thing. Zamponi's gonna write a great story. Um, then we have a diamond painting of the main six, which was on this huge um, canvas, I think? Yes, I think that's what that is. Pretty, pretty sizable. Then over here we have plush puffer chests, which were auctioned off as a group. Oh no, wait, not as a group, but like, um, I think there was 10 of these and, you know, they auctioned them to 10 people and uh, one one pony got one each of that made, made sense. And every pony, I think this could have been Galacon and Spat. Here they auctioned off a water bottle. Of course you gotta auction off the water bottle ponies. Um, we also found the director who was mysteriously floating around. Then we have a body pillow with Millie. This is the mascot of Epona Fest. And yeah, like I said, we may or may, may, may not go there. Uh, moving forward, we have a framed print, um, which looked really, really cool. And this is made with ink, as it says. They're very impressive. Then over here we have waffles in a display case. <laughs> oh boy, really, what is this? Then here we have what I thought was one of the more impressive things. This was a GM Barrow book set with a lot of interesting official books that were released um, throughout the show and she signed them, which is really, really nice. Then over here we have some puzzles that I tried getting a bit in for, but someone beat me with the funny number. Um, then here we have a plushie of waffles, the one from earlier. I don't know if that's the one from earlier, but it's inside of a box too. Then we have the banner, which I think was the, the item that went away for the most. I think it was about 400 something, which is really impressive, but, um, yes. We, uh, got some other interesting items auctioned away, like the freaking lamp from the set. <laughs> yeah, that was probably the most curious thing I've ever seen auctioned away. Also, the Winnie the Pooh picture, that also got auctioned away, um, and we were inches away from having the monkey. <laughs> the monkey on the set also getting auctioned off. But yeah, let's go over the total. Wait, wait, did they fail? No, they did not. We got a total of 8,574 euros, which is a new record for this kind of event at this convention, which is really nice, and um, that this, this every pony this definitely was an impressive convention. Um, but we cannot stop this without going over the closing ceremony and the conclusion to the mystery of how the director got attacked. <laughs> Fanbrush. You are here to hear the final verdict for your crime of an aligning and disposing body of your boss, the director of the department. Since it is clear to me that all three of you are obviously guilty, I hereby sentence you to objection. Excuse you. And how can you tell how you're planning to do that? 
And that indeed is how you can conclude a convention. Take a look at this picture. There are so many humans responsible for this. There's musicians, there's volunteers, there is staff, there is panelists, there is um, the people who run um, the convention center. So many humans coming together to enable a, such a great weekend. But let's hear it from um, the visitor side of things about what we thought about this convention, eh? Yes, if that doesn't say yes, nothing will. But as the convention would wind down, I got to go outside, talk to my wonderful ponies, taking pictures, making friends for the future. Twilight tells us friendship is magic. And outside, look at this, the lamp, lamp thingy from earlier, the, the shade thingy. Oh yeah, I got to take a picture of them. And um, over here, we have a... A uh, way to fix your post-convention blues or depressions, if some call it. This is my remedy. Remind you that together we will always shine. Let let the rainbow remind you that... Yes, ponies, I got ponies to sing along. <laughs> Can't escape me. But to make sure that we actually didn't miss the portal this time, uh, we had to go out into the countryside of the town. Look at that, admire the beautiful sunset. And eventually it got to night time. Oh boy. But seriously, look at how pretty it is there. And uh, the next day I would walk through the alleys of Utrecht and we'd get to have a little bit more food until I finally decided, okay, there is the portal. Let's spread our wings, I would say bye to all the humans, and uh, would fly off into the skies, and here we have what it looks like. This is when you fly through the portal, but yeah, the camera usually breaks when we do that. But ponies, that means we have to go to the outro, and I can show you all the stuff that I got from this convention, so let go. And every pony, here we are. What an interesting convention this was. And I'll admit it was my favorite. There was so much stuff happening. There was always something to do. There was a great story surrounding it. All the mystery that you got to participate in. They went all above and beyond and did freaking musicals, which I've never seen at a pony convention. And that's to coming from some pony who's been to, I think, at least dozens of conventions. So definitely a potential thing where I'm like, hey, let's go there again next year because it was great. Um, but ponies, let's take a look at some of the stuff that I managed to bring home from this convention, because there was a good amount. So ponies, we have the bag, every pony, because I had a sponsor bag. There was some additional merch, including the PonyCon Holland bag. Um, the rubber ducky was also PonyCon Holland. You see there's buttons, then to the top where the bag is, there's some stickers. There is the unicycle thing, there is a magazine which I was able to buy, there's a sticker there too. Then um, there's a poster just underneath that and to the right we have a hoodie, Twilight Sparkle themed. Moving to the right we have the bag, the second bag ponies, which has um, um, Generation 5 ponies, except Hitch. And um, then over even further to the right we have a shirt which also came with the bag, in, um, in with a Ponycon Holland bag. Then. Um, down from there we have uh, the um, the con guide and there we have a Izzy pillow at the bottom stretching across um, the whole picture. Then we have um, the autographs, we have a bunch of stickers, and um, we have a few more things to the left. You see there's more bags and I think that's where there was a lot of smaller things like more buttons, figurines, and all that. And um, yeah, this was a pretty interesting convention. I'll admit this was also the one where I likely spent the most bits at. But I'll say that it was pretty amazing. And um, since I now have loot from three conventions, I'm going to have to come up with a difficult task on how to like display all of that. But that's going to be something for another video. Anyway, ponies, I suppose with that, I thank all you lovely ponies so much for watching. Thank all of you for your lovely support. And... I'm happy to tell you, ponies, that there's going to be a bit of a giveaway for those of you who like pip pedals. Anyway, ponies, with that, I thank all you lovely ponies so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, and remember, ponies, travel, explore the world. You will never get bored. Um, also, 
actually let me let me have a princess celestia do this part of the outro for me Hello, my faithful subjects. Princess Celestia here with New Leaf here at PonyCon Holland, wishing every pony an extended summer, endless sunshine, and oh, holographic cake. Also, he'd like me to tell you to please subscribe to New Leaf's channel, but I don't get any money for that. But if you want to, I hear it's okay. I actually enjoy gardening to it. All right, ta-ta. Bye for now.